Hello, it's June 21st, 2018. Alexander Morton here with a brief update on what happened yesterday. So uh, after months of wondering whether or not the province of BC would renew 20 salmon farm tenures that expired last night in the Broughton Archipelago, the province made an announcement that left a lot of people confused. What just happened? Were the tenures in the Broughton uh, renewed or not? So here's my take on the situation. There's a power struggle between First Nations and the province of BC that is going on in the Broughton Archipelago right now. I'm not really interested in the new policy uh, that uh, Minister Popham announced yesterday, suggesting a somewhat confusing move to month-to-month -month tenures in four years, for four years, but only if First Nations approve. Oh, and if DFO says the fish farms are not harming wild salmon. Uh, really, all of this is too vague to unpack and interpret. But what we do know is that the battle to protect wild salmon in the Broughton Archipelago is not over. Four nations have been in government-to-government -government talks with the province of BC since January about what to do about the 20 salmon farm tenures that expired last night. Uh, they were supposed to be done by now, but according to Minister Popham, they're ongoing. These talks are ongoing today, hence the exclusion of the Broughton Archipelago from her announcement. So even though we were waiting to hear what is going to happen in the Broughton Archipelago, we heard about what is going to happen in all of British Columbia except the Broughton Archipelago. The Zawadainik from Kinkham walked away from these provincial talks because they felt at a certain point that it was more likely to protect their wild fish if they went to court versus continuing the talks. Then on Tuesday, they threw an absolute thunderbolt at the province of British Columbia, and they filed an application in the court for an injunction against the renewal of these very tenures. I personally believe that what the province of BC meant to say yesterday was that they were approving all of the Broughton tenures on a month-to-month -month basis for four years. But because the Zawadainik applied for this injunction, and because thousands of people were waiting for the province to say something, I think the province backed away from talking about the Broughton and applied all of this kind of hurriedly to the entire province of British Columbia. And I think this is why it doesn't really make sense. But Minister Lana Popham did say some really interesting things. She stated that wild salmon produce thousands of jobs. Thank you, Minister Popham, for acknowledging that. Then she said the Federal Minister of Fisheries, Dominique LeBlanc, has been doing a poor job of protecting wild salmon, and she's talking to him about this and that salmon farms are a unique and serious impact on wild fish. Again, thank you, Minister Popham. She also said that going forward, the province will give Indigenous governments a right to approve or not these tenure renewals. Now, I really hope that she includes hereditary leaders in this as their governance demands. But this leads to where we are now. If the province truly plans to give Indigenous governments say over fish farm tenure renewals, and given the critical state of the wild salmon in the Broughton Archipelago right now, if they refuse to respect this right today, I think they're going to find themselves in a very serious situation where their foot dragging could result in extinguishing what is left of the wild salmon in the Broughton Archipelago. Minister Popham recalls talking to an elder last fall in the big house in Alert Bay, telling her that uh, she didn't have any more wild fish to feed to her family. And Popham said that her government really hadn't thought about this before and hadn't looked at the situation through that lens previously, but that she is now. So I'm grateful to her. I'm grateful to the Zawadainik for their bold and uncompromising stance. And I'm grateful for the Kwikwasutanuk, the Mamalilakula, the Namgis for remaining at the table. So there is a diverse effort now among these four nations to do the best that they can for the wild salmon that are lucky enough to be spawning in their territories. Meanwhile, Marine Harvest is taking myself and Ernest Alfred and Carissa Glendale to court on Monday to try to stop us from even looking in their farms because they don't want us to look at their fish. So it's a cliffhanger. Stay tuned. I'll be back.